Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I'm going to expand on that 50-50 flambient technique, that rapid processing technique to do flash ambient photos to where you don't have to paint in everything, uh, where you can actually just change some opacity settings but do it with a single button click from doing a Photoshop action. Now if you haven't seen that prior video you might want to take a look at that. There's a link up here, uh, some the information link up here, where you can go ahead and watch that other video. Here though, I'm going to first show the shortcut on top of that 50-50 flambient, but I'm also then going to elaborate and show the whole thing. So if you don't want to watch that other video, you can feel free to just watch this one, although the first part of this may be a little confusing if you haven't seen that yet, but I'll cover the whole realm of everything and try to get you everything that you need to know. I'm going to show you a couple examples that are going to use this, and since I'm a fan of keystrokes, if you've read any of my books, you know that I love using keystrokes over using a mouse it's a lot faster and so I'm going to use some keystrokes here that'll be easy to remember and that you can use to speed up your processing of doing the flash ambient technique you ready to take a look let's get started okay so we'll take a look at this first example it's very simple it's just two shots of a kitchen we've got first our ambient shot and then we've got our flash shot. Now in this flash shot, it definitely looks quite flashy. And remember one of the principles of doing the flash shot, it's not necessarily to light everything, it's to light it enough to make sure that you have colors. This is something that I really talk about quite a bit in the interiors book. And so with this, we've got all the colors. We can see there was a flash in the far room back here. That's what's lighting that up and getting some of that stuff going on. I'm not worried about the view outside, so this is a great candidate for our first example. But we have to make it look realistic with adding some ambient into it. So we need to find some type of balance to that. So just like we would for any other flash ambient blending, we're just gonna go ahead and grab both of those. And by the way, all the geometry has been done prior on all these, so my verticals were corrected for, and any uh, lens distortion, like I talk about in the interiors book, that's all completely done. So let's go ahead and bring these into uh, Photoshop as layers. So we go Alt P, E, O, O, which will then open as layers in Photoshop. Now, if you're using Mac, you don't have these same type of shortcuts, and you can always then right-click on those. And if you do, then you can go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Since I'm using Windows, and I love to use shortcut keys, I'm just going to go Alt P E O O, hit return, and that's then going to open those as layers in Photoshop. Now, as these load up, of course, I like to take the ambient shot first, and that always places it on top, and that makes the processing go even quicker. Now, I'm going to show the action that makes this, and of course, that's in that prior video, but I'm going to do that so I can show the other technique here as a follow-on. So if you remember from the last video, I'm going to go ahead and hit my shortcut key for that, and that's just going to take that action to apply that 50-50 flash ambient blend. Now, what that basically did was turn that layer into luminosity mode and also with an opacity of 50%. Now, this is where the fun comes in and where this video is really going to help. There's another shortcut key, and you're ready. It's very simple. It's just Escape V, as in Victor, and then you press a number. So right now we're at 50-50. Let's say that we want to have 60% more ambient. Well, we'd go Escape V6. So let me do that. Escape V6. Now we're at 60% ambient. If I want 70%, it's going to be Escape V7. Escape V7. And you can see that's changing. What's changing really is the opacity of the layer. If you look over here, every time I hit Escape V and a number, like 8, it's changing to 80%. If I go Escape V2, it's only 20%. If I go Escape V0, it's 100% ambient. So if we like a lot of ambient in this shot, let's go Escape V9, and that's 90% ambient. Might be a little too much for this. We'll tone it down a little bit, Escape V8, and that's good. So I can go through this real quick, and I can test all these different types of opacities. You can see here I'm going to 60%, Escape V7, uh, that's 70%. So I can keep going through these real quick and see if I like one of these if they're working real well. So instead of just having a 50-50, you can do a 30-70, 40-60, whatever you want, with simply going Escape V and then a number. So why is that working? The idea here, breaking it down, is the Escape key is first taking you away from any of the tools that you might be working with, any of the layer panel, anything that you're doing there, so it frees it up. 
V, when you press V, is doing nothing more than selecting the Move tool. And you don't need the Move tool, but the Move tool does not have an opacity of its own. For instance, if I were to select the Brush tool, I'm going to do B to select the Brush tool. Look what happens up here at the top of the screen. There's a separate opacity and a flow for a brush. If I were to hit a number now, I'm going to change the opacity of that brush. I hit 7 and it changed the opacity to 70%. If I hit 4, it changed the opacity of that brush to 40%. I'm going to hit 0 to change it back. So by having a tool that is not a brush or eraser or a clone tool or something else that has a brush type aspect to it, then it's going to change the layer. So that's why we go Escape V and that then gets us away from any brush type tool because the move tool has no opacity and then we can start playing with numbers. Escape V 8 where we liked it. Now, just like we would before, we'd flatten that, layer flatten, and then we'd save that and of course that goes back then into Lightroom where we'd apply some type of a bump to it and we'd have maybe a finished product. I might actually cool that down just a little bit, up the whites, and that would then be our finished product. Okay, so that's really good. So that's the typical flash ambient blend doing a 50-50, but in this case we went with 80%, so it was really a 2080. Now, let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at this, which is a kitchen which needed a window pull. Now, in this last example, I didn't care about the view. Right? So it just took a lot of the ambient, remember this was the ambient shot, and used that in the view. Just basically blew it out with hardly any that was left from the flash shot. But the flash shot here doesn't have that much of a view. Yeah, I could blow it out, but let's say that I want to retain that. If I do a lot of ambient, and the, this ambient is way overpowering coming through those windows, so I did a window pull. It's not the best view, but it works good for an example here. So what I'm going to do is I've got then my ambient, I've got my flash shot, I've got a window pull shot, and by the way these are all covered in the interiors book and also on some of the other videos here on my YouTube channel. I'm going to select all those and open as layers in Photoshop. Once again, the ambient layer will be on top. So that makes it real easy to start going through. Am I going to do a 50-50? Am I going to do a 2080? Am I going to do a 40-60? Whatever. And then we're going to do the window pull just like we usually do, except here I'm going to show you another shortcut to do that window pull. And I've shown this shortcut in a couple other of the recent videos as well. But first, let's go ahead and tackle that 60-40. Let's zoom in here a little bit so you can kind of see a little bit more of the action going on. So. I'm going to though start from the very beginning. Here's where I'm going to show you then how to make that action. Let's say that you didn't have that action made. So what would you do? Well, you'd first start your little action bar up here. Now that window, to get the action window, if you don't see it here, then there you go up here to window, and then there's down here for the, uh, for the actions, you would hit that checkbox. But we can see it right now. Now what I've got, there's a whole bunch of my stuff there. I'm going to go down here to my tutorial actions, which you can organize these just like any other folder system. But anyways, and some of this, by the way, is in the advanced book for doing actions if you're not familiar with it, and also see that prior video, there's also steps for that. I'm going to create a new action, and here we're going to call it the, uh, the we'll call it once again the 50-50, but for the tutorial. I'm going to assign that to the function key, let's say F10, and I'm going to start recording. And it's very simple, I'm just going to take this down to luminosity mode, and then I'm going to change the opacity down to 50%. Okay, and that's all that's needed. Then I just stop the recording and we're done. So now if I back myself out of here, and I take this back to normal mode, take this back to opacity was 100%, now what I can do is just press the F10 key. And that was that single keystroke that I was doing in the last uh, example. Now here I've got quite a bit of flash still coming in over here. I might want to fix that, but we could probably get by with that. Let's go ahead and bring that up to about 80%. Hey, that brightened up quite a bit, took care of some of that flash. Some of that could be considered natural light coming in over there. And of course, then I can go Escape V7, how do I like that? Escape V5, Escape V3, to wherever I like it, I'm going to go with Escape V8, like that. Now, there's a couple things with the ambient, and if I turn it off, you can see there's definitely a quite a bit of shine up here. So I can always put a layer mask on here to reveal all, and take a low flow eraser and just erase some of that if I want to. Not a big deal. 
I can take some of that out there. So um, same here with maybe the lights. I'll take out just a little bit there. And over here where there's a big hot spot. So I can take that out. This is still somewhat faster than trying to paint in everything you want. Now, once again, it's just another tool in your bag of post-processing tricks to do. So you can use it to whatever you'd like. This is just showing you more flexibility. And then of course, the example I wanted to show here is the window pull. So just like any other window pull, I'm gonna take it up to the top, turn that into darken mode, and then I'm gonna go layer mask hide. Now, a lot of times I'd use a brush, but here I'm gonna grab the polygon tool, and I'm gonna draw polygons around these windows, right? And it doesn't have to be too exact. And then I change my colors over here on the color selector by pressing X, and then I hit the delete key, and boom, there we go. Now if I zoom in here, I can see that there might be a line, like right here, where I um, got too much of the darken mode in there. So I could take a brush if I want to, and I can tap some of that in there, brush some of that in extra if I want, or erase it, however you want, to however you want to blend it. And that's just fine. So anyways, we'll use that same process once again by grabbing that uh, polygon tool, draw something around the window here. I'm gonna grab actually part of that counter too, because it's got a lot of glare. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And I go ahead and do the same thing. And once again, it's just a matter of drawing this polygon around there, having your colors so that they're black and white, not white and black, and hitting the delete key. Switch my colors back by pressing X, zoom in here, and see if I need to adjust any of that. Do I need to add any in? I don't see any lines from drawing the polygon, so we are good to go. I like the look of that, so let's go ahead and layer, flatten, and then we'll go ahead and control S to save it. And then we're back into Lightroom to start applying our bumps. I'll go ahead and apply the standard bump here and maybe cool that down just a tad. And that's our finished product right there. So if the last little bit went a little too fast for you, I've got a lot of other videos on here that show how to do that darken mode technique for the window pulls. I cover a lot of that also in the interiors book. And also in that last video too, which is also the link up here in the uh, information little icon here on the YouTube video, we'll take you to the prior video, which will show you some of those techniques as well. But the point here for this particular tutorial is that you use escape, V, and a number, after applying a 50-50 flash ambient blend, and you can immediately get all kinds of opacity to go from instead of a 50-50, maybe a 40, 60, 30, 70, 20, 80, however much ambient you wanna have. Now it's not a fix all for everything. Not every shot can be done this way. Sometimes I like to have a lot more flexibility on what I'm doing on a room so I can get, for instance, if there's a big disparity in light, a lot of light coming through a window, hardly any light into the room. I'm playing with flash and a lot of stuff going on. It might not look very good, so that's when I'll actually still hand paint a lot of stuff. This is just one of those tricks that works very well, for instance, in bathrooms. It works very well in laundry rooms, simple laundry rooms, if you're not just doing a one-stop pop uh, type of thing like the one-stop rule that I talk about. So it gives you some flexibility for fast processing in a lot of shots. And these, I did this on two different kitchens, and it still worked very well, although kitchens I usually spend a lot more time on because they're big sellers. Anyways, that's all there is to it, and I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of these techniques in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.